This is a Ferrari F430 Spider, and it is quite possibly one of the very best modern Ferraris in existence. Big V8 power, really fast, looks exotic, and a six-speed manual transmission. But this F430 Spider wasn't made with a six-speed manual. It was swapped in later, which adds an interesting element. Today, I'm going to review this F430 Spider Spider with a six-speed swap and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, big news, this F430 Spider is currently for sale and it's being auctioned live on Cars and Bids. This car has that six-speed manual swap, a great color combination, and over 45,000 miles. So if you're looking for one to drive and use and enjoy, this is it. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below to visit the live auction for this F430 Spider, where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, time for the quirks and features of this 430 Spider, and I'm going to start with a little overview. So, the F430 was Ferrari's entry-level mid-engine exotic sports car from 2005 through 2010. And in my opinion, the 430 is the best combination of modern but also old school, of high performance and fast but also mechanical, of any Ferrari. Ferrari, and let me explain why. So, the mid-engine entry-level Ferrari dates all the way back to the 1970s with the 308. But the cars that came before the 430 are, well, they're a little slow. The most powerful and fastest is the 360. That came right before the 430, and that only had 400 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque. Plus, all the earlier 70s, 80s, 90s Ferraris weren't exactly reliable. The 430 was reliable, generally agreed to be a relatively reliable Ferrari, and it's got the power, 490 horsepower from a naturally aspirated V8, 0-60 to 60 in about 4 seconds. Now, the Ferraris that came after the 430, well, they're great, but to me, the 458, as wonderful and as fast as it is, it's just a little sanitized. There was no manual transmission. They were all dual clutches, they shifted fast, they accelerated fast, but they didn't have the mechanical feel. The 430 is the only Ferrari that has it all, the modern reliability and performance combined with kind of an old school mechanical feel. And there's no better place to demonstrate that mechanical feel than with a six-speed manual gated shifter three-pedal car like this one. Now, the interesting thing about this 430 is that it wasn't born with a manual transmission. When this car was built, it came out of the factory with Ferrari's F1 single clutch automated manual transmission instead of a gated six-speed manual. But it's been converted to a manual transmission after the fact. And this is becoming sort of popular with the 430s for a few reasons. Number one, the old school F1 transmissions, they just feel kind of slow and clunky, and they're not tremendously reliable. Reliable. But also, Ferrari made so few manual F430s that getting a factory-built manual is usually twice the price of a factory-built automatic car just for the transmission. And so the transmission swaps are starting to become desirable, especially when you also factor in the added benefit of the driving experience of a gated manual three-pedal car. Now, there's also another interesting component to this particular 430. It has over 45,000 miles, which isn't a lot for an 18-year-old car, but it is a lot for basically any Ferrari. And that kind of makes this sort of the perfect 430 because it's got a manual transmission, but not a factory one, so you don't pay a crazy premium, and it's got a lot of miles, so you can actually use it. If you want to drive a gated manual Ferrari, this is a pretty desirable one. But anyway, next let's move on to all of the 
many quirks, starting with the key, which is this, a very distinctive bright red Ferrari key. The 430 was the first Ferrari to use this key design, and it's very Ferrari. And when you flip it over, it has just one button, lock and unlock. There's no trunk button, you're wondering? More on that in a minute. But you open up the door, and then you discover on the steering wheel you have an engine start button. You press that and it roars to life, except that it doesn't, because this car came from that weird era in the early 2000s when you had an engine start button, but you didn't have a proximity key to tell the car the key was inside. So you first have to put the key in the slot in the ignition, just like any other car. You twist it, just like any other car, and then you press the button. It actually added a step to the process, but it is cool to press that bright red engine start button. Now, you will also see mounted on the steering wheel is a little dial. This allows you to change the drive mode of the car. You can see sport mode, race mode. There's also a winter mode with a snowflake and a wet mode. And there's even one where you can turn off traction control completely if you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> Now, the other interesting thing on the steering wheel, you got horn buttons located right at your thumbs. Ferrari figured put the horn there where it's easiest to press so that you can use it. Now, that's an interesting bit of foreshadowing into what came next. Future Ferrari models had a lot more stuff on the steering wheel. Eventually, it's become the windshield wipers, the headlights, the turn signals, all of that is integrated into the steering wheel. And in this car, with its drive mode dial and its thumb horn buttons, you can kind of start to see them going in that direction. But next interesting quirk, speaking of the steering wheel, one unusual item, let's talk about how you can tell this car has been swapped from an F1 car to a manual transmission. The easiest way is to look on the steering column. You can see these holes here, these slots for where the paddle shifters would have been if this car still had its F1 automated manual transmission. They're not there anymore, but the holes that were there are still in place. The other way to tell is this little screen window in the tachometer. When this car is on and running, you can see this screen has everything illuminated. In a manual transmission F430, when the car is running, that screen should be completely off. But in a swapped car, I guess for whatever reason, it's all on. In an automatic car, this screen would show you what gear you're in when you're pressing your way through the gears with your paddle shifters. But obviously in a manual, you don't need a screen to tell you the gear since you have your gated shifter. Otherwise, in this car, it's pretty hard to tell that it ever was an automatic. The manual has been done well, looks right, feels right, and you got a gated F430 with three pedals. But anyway, next up, let's talk about some of the unusual controls in this car, and specifically the bizarre controls that only work when the car is running, which is a major annoyance I have with the 430 and a few other Ferrari and Maserati models of this era. Let me explain what I mean. So the glove box, there's a button next to it that says open, but you push it and nothing happens. That's because you can't open the glove box in this car with that button unless the car is on or at least the accessories are on because the button operates an electronic switch which opens up the glove box. If your car dies, good luck getting into your glove box to find, say, your owner's manual to figure out what to do, and it goes from there. In the center console, you can see this switch here that shows like a folder opening. That switch opens this storage compartment between the two seat backs, but again, it doesn't open unless the car is on, or at least the electronic accessories are on. If you want to get into that folder and the car is off, well, too bad it's not going to happen. It's the same deal with the fuel door. To the left of the steering wheel, this little switch opens up the fuel door. You push it when the car is off and nothing happens. So you had better hope you don't actually run out of fuel, because if you do, you can't easily open the fuel door again. Although I will admit some of these things have backup mechanical, like, poles that you can get them open, including the fuel door, but it's annoying that the regular switches don't actually work unless the car is running. Now, one quirk I have always loved about the F430 is the little screen inside the tachometer that tries to tell you things using the cheapest, most old school pixelated display you have ever seen. So for instance, if you have the door open, it shows this top-down graphic letting you know it's open, and it's trying to show a graphic of 
of a Ferrari, and it does a decent job, but it's sort of like an 80s video game Tetris Ferrari instead of any sort of decent modern interpretation of one is kind of funny. And there's a few other interesting pictures that display shows. For example, twist the drive mode dial to wet mode, and you can see this image comes on of a Ferrari like sliding in the wet. And again, not a particularly high quality image, but it does get the point across. And in the F430 Spider, this model, the convertible version, when you're putting the top up or down, during the operation of the top, this image shows up in the screen to let you know the top is currently in process. Once again, trying to show a Ferrari, not just a generic car, and it's a hilarious interpretation using as few pixels as possible in this screen. And a few other interesting quirks worth noting in this car. For one, when you put on the turn signal, the light that pops up to let you know the signal is on shows both signals at one time. It's basically just telling you that a turn signal is on. It's not saying which turn signal is on. And this had to have been the very last car made all the way through 2010, 2011 that didn't tell you <laughs> which turn signal was on when you turned on the turn signal. Very old school car thing, and in this case, it's done too. Another interesting Ferrari take on things comes with the climate controls, where you have three dials and two buttons, vastly overcomplicated, and one of the buttons says off, but that button has no apparent <laughs> purpose. Because if you have it in off mode, as I do right now, you can twist the fan speed button and just turn the climate control right back on, overriding the off symbol. If you have off pressed on, you can turn off the climate control by just adjusting the fan dial to the off position. The fan dial turns the climate control on or off. The off button is just a stupid extra that Ferrari used to use on its older cars and for some reason made its way into the 430 as well. Like I said, this car does have some of these old school Ferrari touches that makes it seem like an old school Ferrari, unlike the cars that came later that just felt more commercialized, better of course, but also more sanitized, away from some of the weird Italian quirks that this car still possessed. And by the way, speaking of the roof operation, to put the roof up or down, you have this little switch here in the center that shows a car with well, the roof open, and here's how it works. Take a look at the roof going up, and as you can see, it's climbing into place. It takes a little longer than in some cars, especially those with power retractable hardtops, but it does eventually get in place and keep you from getting wet, and obviously push the button the other direction, and the roof goes down. And then you can see the roof sliding back into its place and returning this car to its rightful status as a well, convertible, an open top car for open top driving. And next up, we move outside the F430, and let's talk through the quirks and features of the exterior styling. Now, the 430's design was really just an evolution of the 360 that came before it. Back in the day, Ferrari used to make their entry-level mid-engine sports cars in pairs. There would be two, one that started the design, and then the second came out, it was an evolution. Then there was a completely new redesign, and then a second one came out, it was an evolution and then a completely new redesign and then an evolution like the 430, which was evolved from the 360. But it was evolved in some fantastic ways. Specifically, it took the 360's sort of curvy, ovalish look and tightened it up. A lot of the curves of the 360 have been modernized, sculpted, sharpened in the 430, and it looked like a more modern, more serious performance car. Ferrari also also modified the front end of the 430 to make it look more aggressive compared to the 360, and they borrowed these big front nostrils from an early 1960s Ferrari Formula One car. You can see that car here, those nostrils were basically applied to the 430 to give it a more muscular front end. 
And then, of course, there was the engine. This was a huge upgrade compared to the 360, which had a 3.6 liter V8, like I said, 400 horsepower. The 430 shows up with a 4.3 liter V8 and 490 horsepower, a huge power increase and performance boost compared to the 360 that came before. And as you can see, the engine is beautiful, the engine is red, the engine is naturally aspirated. And in this particular 430, the engine is loud. The 430 was always a loud car. It sounded good, but this particular example has an aftermarket exhaust designed to make it even louder and even more head turning. Take a listen to a couple of revs. And also worth pointing out a couple of other interesting exterior quirks. For one thing, you can see on the driver's side mirror, F430 is stamped into it. It looks cool and it only appears on the driver's side mirror, not over on the passenger side. It was one of the 430's unusual little Ferrari details. Also worth pointing out the roll hoops that are directly behind the passenger compartment. They're kind of tall and they're colored the same color as the interior. Interior. So in this car, gray with a red interior, these roll hoops really stand out. But somehow they pull it off, they actually look okay, and they also contain a mesh netting inside which acts as a wind deflector to help push wind over the cabin and not make it too windy when you're driving around with the top down in convertible mode. And next up, we move on to the front trunk. Although moving on to the front trunk is rather annoying because accessing the front trunk isn't particularly easy. I mentioned earlier the key has only one button, lock and unlock. There's no trunk button on the key, so you can't access your storage area that way. You go into the car and there's a little switch to the left of the steering wheel to open up the front trunk, but you guessed it, the switch only operates if the electronics are on. So if you want to get into your front trunk, you have to get into the car, reach all the way in, put the key in the ignition, twist, and then you can press the front trunk switch to pop open the front trunk, which is tremendously annoying. Now, it is worth pointing out, there is a cable in the driver's footwell that you can use to open the front trunk. It is not labeled, like in most cars. It's not some latch that you pull, like in basically every other car to get into the front. It's just a secondary emergency use cable, but you end up using it all the time if you ever plan to actually open your front trunk because it's the easiest way. But anyway, the cable opens it up to here and then you can open it the rest of the way and get into your Ferrari front trunk, which is notable because it's actually pretty big. Getting into this trunk is important because you're gonna wanna put stuff here. There's decent room for luggage, for bags, for whatever you might want. And as you can see, there are a few items already in here. Now, this is the owner's manual and all the owner's books, pretty standard. This is a tire inflator kit in case you have a flat, but my favorite thing in this front trunk is this little briefcase looking thing. That's the tool kit. It's included with the car. You open it up and you can see all of the tools that Ferrari gave you when you bought this car. And most of them are specifically Ferrari branded tools. They actually say Ferrari on them, which is really cool. You wanna buy some tools for your workshop? Just get an F430 toolkit and then you can have some Ferrari branded stuff that just plain looks cool. But those are the items that came in the F430 front trunk and of course you can fill it up from there with your own luggage. All right, driving the manual F430 Spider. And I gotta say, if I had to buy any Ferrari in the world, it'd be an F50. <laughs> but this would be about fifth on my list. F50, F40, SP3, maybe then this, a stick 430 Spider. I love the 430, especially the Spider. I live in California where it's always sunny and I love a good manual trans. <laughs> oh, there's nothing that I love more than driving a stick 430. It's so good. It's so good. And the stick conversions are just as good. Now, this particular 430 Spider 
is loud. It has some sort of aftermarket exhaust that makes it tremendously loud. Some people will like that. I personally find it a little obnoxious. I would like to just enjoy the drive without the craziness of attracting everyone's attention. But regardless, this is a very special car. And you're combining all of the best things about, in my opinion, about Ferrari. You have high performance, even by modern standards, this car feels fast. You have a gated manual transmission. You have the mechanical feel and kind of the weird quirks of like an older school Ferrari model. This car has it all. And I just, I've always loved the 430 Spider for that reason, the 430 Spider stick for that reason. A gated manual combined with a lot of cool modern stuff. This car is just so good, God. This car is just so cool. This amazing exotic car feel. And the thing that's gonna make this car really desirable, at least for me, it is such a driver car. It has miles and it's been driven and it's been used and it has a manual transmission. Like you can't drive a stick 430 anymore because they've become so valuable. You kind of have to preserve it. It's like scary to drive one. Well, here's your opportunity to drive one that's a little bit rough around the edges, that's got a manual transmission, that's got some miles that you can actually use. And I think that's just, the coolest combination of things in this car. Now, I have driven several 430s for reviews in the past. I recently reviewed a 430 Scuderia. I reviewed a 430 Spider not that long ago. I've driven a bunch of these cars, so there's not too much like new that I'm gonna cover and say that's gonna be particularly like groundbreaking. But this is a really special car. It's desirable, it drives really well, it's fun to use. God, this car just feels so cool and it's, and it's loud and it's the right look. And I think the 430 is aging well, which is interesting because I don't think the 360 is aging particularly well. It, it's starting to look kind of squidgy and the lines are a little too soft and it's a little frog-like, but the 430 is like tight and just like well, well done. Um, it was a great contrast to the 360, a great improvement really. It's just so fast. It's so much faster than my old 360 was. It's just on like a different level of performance and speed that makes it far, far more desirable. I, it's also worth pointing out that the manual transmission and the gate really work well. It feels factory. Oh, you hear the click clack when you go into gear. God, this car is just the perfect everything. And for its price point, it is especially desirable. I just think there is so much good in a stick 430 Spider, particularly a conversion where you're not paying factory money for one. It steers and handles fantastically, even by modern standards. It's quick steering. Um, it's just so fast. It's so fun. It's so exciting. This is just such a great all around exotic sports car. Parts are very available. They made a bunch of them, so they're around. And yet it still feels and looks exotic. Like there are so few drawbacks to a good 430, especially with a manual transmission. I just can't say enough good things about this car. And, and, and if I was reviewing a 458, I would also say great things, but I would talk about how it feels a little too easy, a little too point and shoot. If I was reviewing a 360, I would talk about how maybe it feels a little slow. Uh, this car just has the perfect balance. And when you throw in a manual and a convertible, what else do you want? Like what else should an exotic car be? but a perfect manual convertible Ferrari, wide, low, lots of power, lots of sound. This is the car. Uh, and it's not as much money as you would think considering how much the car it really is. And so that's the Ferrari F430 Spider with a six speed manual swap. A real factory F430 Spider six speed is huge money now, but a swapped car is just as exciting. If you're looking to drive your Ferrari and not collect your Ferrari, this car checks all the boxes. At least it does for me. And now it's time to give this 430 Spider a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 64 out of 100, which places the F430 Spider here against some relevant cars. This is a really exciting car to drive. It looks awesome, it makes the right sounds, and the manual transmission really livens things up, which is why this F430 Spider beats out an automatic example I tested in the weekend categories. Overall, a stick 430 Spider really is a great combination of exotic, fun, affordable, reliable, and fast, and I always enjoy driving one. 